Uh, I still don't feel good. Hey, what's up? It's me again. It's Jenna and Jude. She's sleeping right now. I just wanted to take you guys through a normal ER visit that leads to an admission through to discharge. So why don't you come with me on this not so super fun journey, but maybe you'll learn something. Enjoy. I've never made a video like this. It's embarrassing, but if I can help one person not feel alone, then I feel like this video has a purpose because I feel very alone. If anyone is suffering like this, I'm sorry, and I can empathize. This is so embarrassing, belittling, so depressing. But if I can help one person not feel alone, if I can help one person feel a little understood, that's all I want, because I wish that I had more than just one friend that understood. And I'm grateful that my brother and my dad and now my mom are all on the same page and understanding. It's taken a long time to get some people on my side. This is me after Dilaudid and Fentanyl. I really don't feel like I've had any medication at all. Hopefully they can see that. I love you. Thanks for being here for me. I am so jealous of all the people that do not have to go to the emergency room like this. But I also wish you all health. Please never have to go through this. I am not supposed to have radiation, if at all possible. The Sandoval Regional Medical Center is kind of in the middle of nowhere, but I'm a country girl. 25 minutes is not that far and worth it for the proper treatment from doctors that give a shit and nurses that care and don't treat me like crap. And we can joke about butterfly needles because I don't care what they use anymore. Finally just got into my room. Let's hope I can get some answers. Fingers crossed. Wish me luck, guys. Just got my third round of pain meds. It's helping a little bit. I really still hope I get some answers. I really hope they don't just drug me up and send me home. Which is usually what hospitals do. Going to the ER is not fun. I know it's not supposed to be fun and it's the worst ever. The only good thing is this hospital in particular. Out of any place I've been, treat me like a human and not a number on a piece of paper. Thank you Sandoval Regional Medical Center for always trying your best to make me understand what's going on or help me understand what's going on. Thank you so much for making me feel like you give a shit. The majority of the time when I'm in ER or admitted to the hospital, I am not treated very nicely since I'm not missing an appendage or bleeding out of my eyeballs. <laughs> I guess we'll see how it goes. This is me on one round of Dilaudid and two rounds of fentanyl. I really hope that I can get some relief. I am still not, no, I'm, I'm not feeling better. This is how it goes. This is how it goes every time I come to the hospital. So again, fingers crossed that I can get admitted so we can take care of my GI scope, possibly get to the bottom of what this is and what's going on with me this time. If it's related to bile acid salt malabsorption or stress or both or something completely different. Sorry for the lack of lighting. They tried to discharge me. I am... Um, the admitting doctor just came down to the department, okay. so he'll probably spend some time talking to the ER doc, okay. and then he'll come in and talk to you. Okay. Do you to get your temperature? 37.1. How's that? It is 98.7. Okay. That, it went down a little bit. Yeah. That's good. Be a perk of being in the hospital so much as I know how to silence the alarms and start the saline IV. But I said, what are you gonna do? Send me home so that I can throw up more. My brother's at work, would be basically alone. So they're gonna keep me, make sure that I can function like a normal human being when I do go home. He was saying something like, I could write pain meds all day. And I'm like, pain to me is relative. I don't want to pay medication. I want to know what's wrong. Vomiting and nausea, other gross things. 
the admitting doctor just came down. Hopefully I'll be able to get into a room within the next hour or two. I feel a lot better than I did when I got here. I am. Hopefully I'll be able to get some rest and hopefully I will have a better update for you guys later. Wish me luck. It's really a scary feeling to not be in control of your body. Okay. I think one of the things I hate the most is trying to convince the doctor that I am not faking. This is the hardest thing. It's the most embarrassing, hard, defeating thing I've ever had to deal with in my life. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I appreciate what they are doing for me. The ER is not a place to come for answers. I get that. I just want to know that I can go home and take care of myself, which I do not feel like I can do right now. I just spoke with the admitting doctor. He basically said, what every doctor has ever said to me before when they think that it's psychosomatic. They just don't believe that it's a serious thing. And I'm having to explain myself that in the 10 years and plus that I've had these stomach problems, that this is nothing I've ever experienced when I'm having problems with it. I miss my dad being my advocate. It's hard to advocate for yourself when you're so embarrassed that you can't fix yourself or being a grown adult and not being able to take care of myself. Some people on my side. We won't bother you for nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's no blood ordered at this time. I don't know if it's anything different. Okay. Your nurses will look at it. And yeah. It. Okay. I'm sorry. That's it's okay. on our handheld. <laughs> hey, thanks. It's nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Have a good day. I hope you Thank you better. so much. Thank you. Wow, I just got moved into my room. Moon. Being admitted into the hospital is not all it's cracked up to be. It's actually a big pain in the ass, but at least I'm being taken care of, being cared for, and hopefully being taken seriously. I'm usually not at a loss for words, but I'm at a loss for words. I'm excited to see my view in the morning. Looks like I'm going to have a pretty awesome view. Well, typical hospital shit. I've been here for five hours upstairs, admitted. I just saw the doctor. Like, I was just in the emergency room. They admitted me. Now you're gonna make me wait five hours? <sighs> Stupid. I'm not a happy camper. I look like crap. ice pack on my head. I have to keep my arm like this. I have my heating pad. But <sighs> oh, my head still hurts. A lot. It's 5.50 in the afternoon. I have officially been here for over 24 hours. I've been admitted for about 12 hours. Everything that they give me to eat, I've thrown up. Every time I try and drink fluids, I get sick. I'm really irritated right now because I want my IV move. It's all like got blood in there and it hurts and my body doesn't really like having all the stuff on it. So I've never had a problem getting my IV moved before. It's hard not to get an attitude of people to get it. I've kind of been asking my nurse all day, you know, just tell me straight up yes or no. Don't tell me you're gonna go check if you know it's a no and just say no. If, if, if you say you're gonna bring me nausea medicine, don't wait until I buzz you because I threw up all over myself and then come in here and tell me that my nausea medication has been changed and I can't get any nausea medication for another two hours. And then they're gonna have a shift change in like an hour. So I'm gonna have all new doctors and nurses to explain myself to for the third time. ER, oh no, sorry, fourth. ER, admitting doctor, nurses once I was admitted and now the doctors from the second shift and now they're about to have a shift change again. So I get to tell a whole bunch more people 
how I feel. And I get to have a whole bunch more people look at me like I'm... I don't really know. Maybe I'm just super insecure about being in the hospital. At least I have my own room. I don't know if there's anything worse than having to share a room with someone in the hospital. I might run out of shit to say because of how embarrassing it is. I just, I'm getting to the point where I just want to go home. I wanted to go home last night. I didn't even want to come here, but I had to. This is a side of me that I've never wished anyone to see. This is a side of me that I've tried to hide. I just want to feel better so I can go home and take care of myself. And I'm moving this week. Awesome. Okay, I don't know. I have your morphine. Okay, dope. The flesh is, we'll put your morphine in. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and discontinue your fluid, and I'll come back and start another IV. Okay, dope. Sounds okay. good. Okay, so I'm going to give you your morphine. Okay. So that should help. At least they give you a room to shower in, or a shower in your room to take a shower. It's nice to get that hospital smell all off momentarily. I hope they have a comb. I didn't bring a brush. It's about 10.30 at night. Feel the same, feel like shit, which ain't nothing new. It's 11.39, I am showered, I got my hair brushed, I feel clean, I'm trying to eat jello. I'm not allowed to have solid food. Fun. <laughs> I really wanna go home tomorrow. It's like 50-50. I don't know. It's 1.14 in the afternoon on Tuesday. Still here. Uh, I have the worst migraine ever. So bad. I just lay with my ice pack on my whole face. And that kind of helps, but not really. It's nice. And then I'm sitting here staring at my food, which I'll insert a couple pictures of because it looks pretty good for hospital food. However, they wouldn't give me my nausea medication and my anxiety medication at the same time because they're both sedating. They tell me these things as if I don't already know them. I try to explain that I've been taking these medications together for 10 years. Doctor approved. This doctor said no. The, the nurse said no. So now I have to wait, but that's okay. It's not their fault. If they were my regular doctors, it might be different, but they don't know me. For all they know, I could be full of... I'm grateful that everyone here has been so friendly and so nice and made me feel like a real person. All of the nurses are super kind and they wear their makeup and they're so pretty and they're so nice. I have not had one mean nurse here. Not one. And that has to be a first. Sandoval Regional Medical Center, you get the number one spot for having the nicest nurses. Thank you. This food looks pretty good too. So. As bad as it is to have to come to the hospital anyways, it sucks that much more when your nurses hate you or are so rude or hate themselves or hate their job and take it out on the patient. I know that all too well. I am so, so, so grateful that every single person that works in the Sandoval Regional Medical Center out here, they deserve some kind of recognition. They are amazing. They are so above and beyond amazing. Aside from all the crap and not feeling good, I'm surrounded by an incredible team of people. I might be alone and my family might be thousands of miles away and my brother's at work. I'm surrounded by people that are caring it's nice. This can be kind of scary. It's a lot of alone time being sick. Not just like blue sick, like can't take care of yourself sick. I'm supposed to get discharged. I don't know. 
and it's not really looking like it. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I miss my dog. I miss my Jude. I'm ready to go. But I'm also hungry. But I'm nauseous. And I have a migraine. And other things that don't need to be discussed. My hair's. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Nurse Lindsay. You literally are giving me some minutes of feeling like a normal person for a minute, and I think I can eat. Finally, without getting sick. That is really good. It is 1.38. See how it goes. <clears throat> and I only comment on the fact that they're wearing their makeup because it's a very few and far between that you go to a hospital and see any nurse with makeup on. It's totally fine. You do you. I am just pointing out. I think the staff here really like working here. I, they seem to all really love their jobs and it just shines and shows. Is this what like a rich person in a hospital is like? For those uber, uber rich people where they could just go a hotel room in their hospital room and everybody's nice to them? Man, I thought that was like some mythical ass shit for a regular person like me anyways. Shit. <laughs> okay. So my potassium is low, and I need to drink this orange liquid that tastes like orange cough syrup with sweetener. Very unpleasant. I'm going to check it out. I'm not ready. <clears throat> better today, could you tell? <laughs> it is 4.40 and I just found out that I am getting discharged, yay! I'm so excited, I'm ready to go home. <sighs> I ate a lot for lunch. That was the first time I had been able to keep anything down in three days. I think that had a lot to do with my migraine, which is still just like a slight headache. I need sleep, I think it's sleep too. Do I have answers? No. That's not what the ER is for, unless you're dying. Serious conditions that can only be solved at an emergency room. But if it's something you can go to a specialist for, which I have appointments with my specialists already set, so I'm already all set. And I'm just waiting for them to kind of take my IV out, give me my discharge paper. Thanks for following me on my hospital journey. I hope it was informative. Hopefully it shed some light on to what people with chronic illnesses go through when they have an episode, what people with a hidden illness go through, like something you can't see on the outside, you know. We get treated differently a lot. Not so much at this hospital. They're really, really, really awesome here. I felt not embarrassed. Whatever. I don't know. I shouldn't be embarrassed anyways. Okay, I'm a happy, chipper person, and I'm not really one to show my weaknesses, but I think that overall, this has given me more strength than it has been a weakness. Thanks for stopping by. Please let me know what you think. Leave me some comments. I would love feedback, you guys. Even if it's just an opinion, I am interested in your opinion. If you would like more medical informative videos. I could try to do that, but we'll see. This particular journey has come to an end and I am excited to go home and snuggle with my dog and get a good night's rest before we move. <laughs> Can you pack up my stuff? Because Yaya always got to bring her bag of stuff with her to the hospital. I need phone chargers and pencils and stuff to write on, and lotions, and face masks.
like eye mask covers to sleep with. <laughs> face mask, that'd be hilarious. The nurse come in and I'm all like, got a face mask on, like, oh, this is my mask, you like it? It's detox. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> peace.